Staffordshire figures, sometimes known as Staffordshire flatbacks for reasons which will become apparent, were once the pride and joy of the most humble homes, gracing the mantelpiece uh, of houses that probably had very little in the way of decoration other than these. Yet move forward a hundred years and into the 1960s, they'd move from the humblest of houses to the grandest of houses. They became the absolute epitome of chic. Into the 70s, when more research went on them, they continue to increase in value and they were worth thousands of pounds. I can remember as a child looking through shop windows like this, seeing them and, and lusting after them and thinking if only one day I could afford them. And yet in 1990, uh, they started reproducing them in China, flooded the market and the market just went crash. And today they're cheaper than they ever have been in their history. So now is a great time to look at some genuine examples and also find out how you can tell the fakes because once you know, it's pretty obvious. Staffordshire figures started really um, in the 1840s. And as I say, they're called flatbacks quite simply because they've got flat backs and the backs are almost always uh, undecorated like this. There was no reason because they stood on the mantelpiece, almost always in pairs. So this is a fisherman, there will be a fisherman's wife. Uh, this is a figure of Milton, he was paired with Shakespeare. Figures like this, which is the clock, and of course you think, well, what's the point of having a, a clock which is made from China and doesn't work? If you were poor and you didn't have a clock, having this object on your mantelpiece was a way of saying, yeah, one day we will actually own a clock. So when they started in around about 1840, uh, which this figure is, that this sort of um, quite sort of high base on it, this is actually based, as many of the early ones were, on porcelain models. This is a model of Minton, probably after John Cheer, an 18th century sculptor. And this is copying a, a Derby version, uh, which you can see on the screen now. Now, the, again, the early ones, he has actually got some decoration on his back. Um, it's got some gilding on the bottom, but he's nicely painted. You know, if you look at the details on his uh, pantaloons, again, they're quite nicely done. The gilding's quite nicely done. So the earlier figures are quite nicely decorated. Again, if you look at the face, the face is quite carefully painted. This one's probably the next uh, one in date, much more typical um, of the mid-century, sort of 1850, 1860. And again, by this time, there's next to nothing on the back. There's a little bit of decoration there, but look at that lovely thin profile. And even though this is slightly later, again, when we look at the details, the details are quite nicely done. The decoration um, of his, uh, his robe, the decoration of the lion, and again, the eyes are nicely done. This is meant to be Daniel in the lion's den, praying for salvation. And again, the, the bottom is quite nicely painted, and we've got some sort of shredded clay work. So again, there's a little bit of attention to detail. This one is a, a much um, later one, probably more 1860, 1870. Again, she's got a little bit of decoration on the back, but when you start looking at her closely, the decoration is getting a little bit more sort of feeble. And then we get to this big one. He's later again, almost nothing on the back. He's much more into the 1870s, 1880s. And when you compare the color, if you look at the yellow on this one, and the yellow on that one, uh, you can see the yellow on this one's just a little bit more harsh, just a bit more acidic. That's often an indication of the later colours. Another good indicator to dating is the use of cobalt blue. So uh, this, this is cobalt blue. This figure has it as well. Cobalt blue is uh, decorated under the glaze, so these would have to gone through two firings. It's time to see cobalt blue until around about 1860, 1870. Note this figure doesn't have any cobalt blue. He's been through the kiln once, and then they've decorated and fired him again. So this was a, a later piece, more 1870, um, and it was cheaper to do. So look out for cobalt blue. If you see it, you tend to know it's going to be between 1840 and 1860. No good cobalt blue, it's going to be later. But of course, what happens after that? Typical figures like this were made until about 1900, 1910. 
But then some potters never stopped, and several factories continued right until the 1960s, um, making um, not really repros, they kind of argued uh, in their publicity materials that they'd never stopped making them, so they weren't really repros. They were using the same moulds, but uh, the later pieces are uh, much clumsier. Uh, they tend to be sort of more thickly potted, uh, and oftentimes they have marks on the bottom as well, which none of these ever do. If you look at the bottom, nothing on the bottom, nothing on the bottom, again nothing on the bottom. One further thing, although we call them uh, Staffordshire figures, um, because the bulk, like most British ceramics, were made in the Staffordshire region, they, they were made all over the country. A figure like this is actually probably made uh, here in the northeast or in Scotland. Um, all of the um, potters across the country used to make them because they were very cheap to make and they were very popular. But what about the fakes? Well, have you spotted which one of these is the fake? Well, you're probably going to think, yes, it's this one I've never spoken about. Um, so how do you tell? Well, let's kind of put all of these to one side and we'll compare to, actually, we'll compare to Daniel in the Lion's Den because he's the most similar. So if we look at Daniel in the Lion's Den, typical flat back, nice thin profile. This peacock, just a bit fat, got decoration all the way around which to the potters of Staffordshire would have been a bit of a waste of time and a waste of money but the real key is even on this you can see look how white Daniel in the lion's den is look how dark and dirty this figure from China is and also when you look at it closely look at all this black dirt it feels a bit this feels sort of rough and a bit sort of um, bit sort of gritty feeling but all of this crazing which has been stained uh, simply to fake it and again when you look at the foot rim which is something you often do look how thick and how dirty this foot rim is well as we compare it to Daniel on the Lion's Den bearing in mind this is a figure from about 1850 look at how much cleaner and how much thinner the foot rim is so when we look at the the foot rim the thinness of it compared to the thickness of this one. It's just a little bit crude. So lots of these figures are around and they're kind of just described as Staffordshire figures. They don't have a date on them. When a dealer always puts a date on, that's always a good key that they're knowing what they're looking for. Um, another thing which um, is apparent in these is that these are these are, are called slip casts. So this would have been cast upside down like that in a two-part mold quite simply made they almost always have a little hole on the bottom you look at this one here's the hole here we look at Milton he's got a hole here if we look at our fisherman he's got a hole in the back that was to let the air escape uh, they're not at all hidden that they were part of the process but the Chinese one Look, they've kind of hidden it away just under its tail. And when you look at the decoration closely, um, even though if we compare it to the figure, which I said, this one has much more acidic. Look at how much more um, acidic the color and how just generally wrong it is. Um, again, if you feel it, there's, the, oh, there's all this sort of strange oxidization on it, which when you compare it to a genuine figure, there just isn't. So once you've seen a few fakes, the fakes are pretty easy to stand out. Well, I hope you find that interesting and I hope you're enjoying uh, these videos. If you are, let me know. And um, if you're not, let me know as well. I'd be very happy to look at any suggestions you want for future videos. And uh, if you're not already, subscribe to my channel. Thank you.